All right, perfect. Okay, well, welcome to Ask a Coach. If you have not been here before, um, let me get this in real quick, just hot sec. I should I get all my things? Okay, perfect. Okay, so if you have not been to Ask a Coach before, I'll give you a quick little rundown. So I am Lisa Bingley, um, owner and CEO and founder of Agent Leader. I am a realtor, I'm a broker, and I'm a coach. I'm a high performance coach and I'm a life coach. So about, oh gosh, I've held my license for nine years. And about four years ago, after I steadily just kept making more and more money and we got into the realm of what we like to call stupid money, which for me, anything over 130,000, you know, or $200,000, that was became stupid money for me. But as I started reaching 500,000 and 650,000 and 800,000 and 950,000, every year just kept going up and up and up and up. Um, as it did that, it became pretty unfulfilling for me. Paychecks were not really great anymore. They were fine, but um, it was unfulfilling. And what became more fulfilling is being able to share my, my knowledge with other people. And so that's why I created Agent Leader. That's why I started coaching because I wanted other people to find the same success. I found so many realtors as I looked through all the, the forums, the Facebook groups and everything that just struggle and struggle and struggle and they can't sell a house. And here I have checks that I don't even remember to deposit because I had so much money coming in. And so um, anyway, so I found an Agent Leader and I created the curriculum and I became licensed as a and, and trained as a certified high performance coach, which is the number one coaching program in the world. And then also as a certified life coach, so I can deal with any of the um, struggles that we might have on the on the mindset side of things. Um, anyway, so that's a little bit about me. So as you come to ask a coach today, you can ask me anything. So if it has to do with transactions, that's great. I can't give you legal advice, of course, but we can talk strategy. Um, you know, leads are really great questions. People ask me all the time. Uh, if we have problems with our mindset, we can tackle that. So we, we, we've got it all covered. So welcome to 2024 and let's get rolling. So if you'd like to raise your hand or unmute, then uh, why don't you ask me a question? What would you like to be coached on today? Hi, this is Sharice. I'm new to your podcast here, your uh, live coaching uh, channel. And I just really came because I wasn't going to ask any questions, but um, now I'm just kind of curious kind of how you kick things off. I just switched over to EXP a couple months ago, but I'm a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of information and materials out there. Like kind of how did you find your niche and what worked really well when you first started as a realtor? Yeah. Okay. So um, that's a really great question. So overwhelmed by all the, all the options and the materials that you've got. Okay. Um, so there was one really great benefit of nine years ago and me being totally out of any loop. I didn't rely or look at anything online or any sorts of training. I had no materials. So that being said, when you do have all these options and all these materials, I would look at them and give yourself 30 minutes, even 15 minutes would probably work to, to line them out of what options you have, what materials you have, and then decide you're going to be drawn to something, right? And, and then look at that, that you're really interested in doing and what makes you excited. That's what I would do because there's so many options and there is a lot of material. And even now as a coach, it could be overwhelming because I look at all the material, all the things I could teach you. And it's like, then you go into the land of overwhelm, right? And so looking at it and knowing that all of them aren't right for you right now. So you just need to decipher what's going to be good for you now. Now, does that bring anything up different for you? Um, not necessarily like they have a mentor program for agents that are new or haven't sold anything within the last two years. So I'm in that. Currently, and I have a mentor here, which is awesome. I think the other challenge too is that I also have a, a remote full time job. So it's trying to find that balance that really works to get myself ramped up at EXP, which I love because they do have everything under the sun to offer right. and everybody's willing to help everybody there, which is awesome. So I guess it is, I am going to just have to take some time to really dial in what, what is going to work for me next step from the mentor training um, that they have to offer. Yes, yes. Perfect. Well, and you said the magic words, it's the next step. 
Like what's just your next step, not what's going to work forever, not what you're going to do all year long, not your 10 year plan. It literally is. Here's where I'm at today. What's my next step? And, and you do have something else that you battle, which a lot of people do, which is another job. And then you're trying to kind of scoot this one in with it, right? Which can be hard to do. And so there will be a point where that's not going to balance, like where you're not going to be able to do that. And that may not be right now, but just pay attention to that. Be very aware that eventually you're going to start to feel that friction of trying to do these two things and you're going to have to make some other decisions too. Yeah. Yeah. That's the goal, honestly, <laughs> yeah. is to get to that point where I make that decision to switch over full-time to real estate and um, the sooner, the better. So, yeah. And you know what? Oh my gosh. I have to tell you, I working an eight to five job, it's been years since I've done it. Cause I was a mom. I stayed at home mom. I did jobs from home, but I literally wasn't like in an office since I was 22, 21, 20. It was young. Okay. So I spent two days this week and a few days last week in our mayor's office because I'm mayor now. And so I spent some time there and I was like, I came home and told my husband, I was like, I am never going to work for anyone ever. Like, this is terrible. <laughs> Just the, like, I'm like, I think I've been a wild horse for way too long being an independent contractor that I was like, this sucks. Like, whoa. And this, the coolest thing about real estate is our ability and the capacity to earn as much as we want. But when we work for somebody else, they're dictating like, here's how much you earn and you get, you know, X amount per year raise. You, you're like, you're such, you're it's so confining, I feel like. So real estate is a really awesome opportunity. We just have to be able to know how we're going to harness that to be good at it. How long have you been licensed? Sorry, I've been licensed for a little over five years, but the last two years have had no production just due to some family medical stuff and some moves that we have had. Okay. Okay. So you really know how to do your job. Yes. You're just I trying do. to re-ramp it back up again. Yes, correct. Okay. So how do you, so I would encourage you, I'll just kind of la last thoughts here, but I would, um, I would encourage you to, to do just that, to look at where number one, where you used to get business from, where did it come from? What are you good at? Right. Yeah. It, that was friends and family, but really also I really do enjoy working with first time home buyers. Right. Um, and I have a couple of kids coming into the market, their friends and network will be coming into the market over the next few years. So I, my goal is to kind of target that industry. And I have, I helped several, um, move up buyers as well from the sell and purchase of their next home in, in new communities as well. So I have some experience in those areas, but I think the move up buyers and first time home buyers are an area I want to target. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So if that's your target, now you go next step because you've identified your target, right? Now do a little bit of a brain dump on all the different ways that you can reach the first time home buyers. So if you're like, okay, how would I market? Who are these people? Where are they at? How do I find them? How do I speak to them? How's this going to work? Right. And then give yourself that, that just wide open space to be like, how do I like all that, right? Generate the ideas and let your brain go to work trying to solve that problem. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good, good questions. Okay. Michael. Hello. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> I'm great. Okay. So I, I'm going to say that I'm a new I'm I'm brand new in the in the industry. Um, I I come from a 19 half year career in warehouse management. Okay. I got my I got my license in October of 22, and then this was my first full 23 was my first full year in real estate. Okay. And how did that go? I had 24 transactions. Good job. Okay. So, I uh, I I took every avenue that I could take to get. I mean, I had a, I had a sphere that once I come into real estate that, you know, that was some of my transactions. I'm actually on a team internal of my agency okay. and we, do, we do Zillow leads also. Okay. I'm wanting to break away from that. So okay. I think my challenge right now is my lead gen, my spheres there, my referrals are there from my past clients. As long as you treat them <clears throat> how they're supposed to be treated, they're going to refer you. Right. I have figured that out. 
-hmm. but it, it's the legion. I, that's my challenge right now is, is just bringing in new, being new in that market that there's thousands of names out there. Cause every, every time you ask somebody, do you know a real estate agent? Uh, yeah, I know one. So how, what's the best way to stick out to be different? Okay. Good questions. Okay. So I want, I want to have you reframe something for just a second. So you've told me that you are considering yourself new, right? And also that if you're breaking off of this team, that that's also that you're starting something new or that you're like jumping into a new market. Yes. Okay. Selling 24 houses isn't new. You're not new anymore. <laughs> okay. So okay. Don't, don't tell yourself you're new because when you okay. tell yourself you're new, you're going to start to believe other things about yourself. Like you're not like you can't find, you can't do. That's just a negative way to come at it. Okay. okay. All right. So when you have the, the mindset or the thought of like, I'm experienced, which you are not new okay. experienced, that helps to generate some different energy as you're going to go out to find more clientele. So okay. that, that would be number one. The second part is if you're going to break away from a team, which is great. Um, you, you're you going to be branding yourself instead of your team now, which is good. So I would harness all your past clientele. And I don't know what that what your follow-up system looks like with your past clientele, but that's number one. When you have clients, past clients, that's the first place that we start. Okay. Okay. Um, for everyone, I always suggest my follow-up playbook, which is literally my lowest maintenance, something I created my first year when I had business. And by year four, I had a 95% referral and repeat business rate selling 120 houses a year. So it works like magic, like magic. Yeah. It's it's awesome. So I, I would encourage you to look at that so that you get your, your follow-up with your past clients set. And so that it doesn't fall through the cracks. That's huge. Okay. 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 My next question for you would be, did you really write down the source of all your business? Do you know, like out of 24, 10 of them came from Zillow, 10 came from friends, two came from neighbors. Do you know where your business came from? Yes. Okay. Where did it come from? The, I was, 60% uh, of it did come from the Zillow leads okay. that I started the team with. Um, and then um, the 25% uh, the come from my sphere, friends and and referrals from them and then um the other comes from the other 35 percent come from me i'm an outgoing person i will speak to anybody i will talk to anybody it came from me my my conversations now start out i'm a real estate agent even for people that i've known for you know 40 yeah. years yeah that, that i bring so the other 35 percent come from just those conversations okay so really when you're breaking out on your own to do something new, you're only missing your Zillow leads. Yes. And you have the opportunity, if you would like to pay for Zillow yourself, you could. Yes. That's an option. Okay. If that's something that you like, some people like that. It works great for my husband. He's an introvert. He doesn't like to go out and talk to people, but he does really great when they call him. Yes. So that works really well for him. Okay. So there's that. Um, I would also, because you have some some stats behind you, I would make sure if you want to, this was what I would do is go sign up for all of the free lead sources that send you leads and then you just pay a referral fee on the back end. Okay. That's going to help generate some more. Everything will trickle it. And then you're already doing, you're getting out and talk to people. You could also amplify that. Where, where did you, where did you run into those people? Can you get out and be more social? Can you attend more events? Can you talk to more neighbors? I mean, however it is that you're communicating with people, maybe amplify that. Maybe you want to go that direction. Okay. And, and it, it, it's one of these things, my badge stayed on me, no matter where I was, grocery store, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I even, I even got clients when I was checking out, Oh, you're a real estate agent. Hey, can I ask you something? Yeah. So, yes. I mean, I'm, I, it's almost like I always wear a banner. Good. I'm proud. I'm proud, and and I love being a real estate agent. Yep. With yep. with that aspect, I have been playing around with and 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 planning on stepping out into bringing that into out into a bigger scale in 
taking it to YouTube, right? I mean, that's a, that's a way to speak to people that you will never meet, but that's a way to get yourself out there and speak to people. Sure is. And that's something you can put. So here's the thing with, with leads. Okay. So if you, this is where people go wrong with it. This is where they actually have problems. If they're like, oh, I'm going to do YouTube and YouTube is going to consume my time, or I'm going to do social media and social media is going to consume my time. And if we do that, we are putting all of our eggs in one basket, right? As they like to say, you're putting all the eggs in one basket. And so you're waiting for something to shake out with that one method. And if I were, um, when Sharice asked me, like, what did I do when I started? I did everything under the sun that I possibly could. I would just That's keep me. taking action <laughs> until I found something that worked for me because I didn't know what was going to work. And so I literally would just do anything I could. Now, that being said, I did a lot of customer facing things. I did a lot of that front facing, talking to people, talking to for sale by owners, talking to people at the grocery store, you know, volunteering at the school so I could get to know more people and talk to those people. A lot of that outreach so that I could be able to get my name out there and, and have people know, you know, know who I was and what I did. So all the time when it comes to leads, you guys, like there's two things I want to teach you about that is there's all the different ways that have to funnel in. So I always, it's like, you've got your for sale by owners, right? You got your expires, you got your free, what I call free sources, but those are just all the ones that you pay a referral fee on the back end. If you want any paid sources, you can be able to add any paid sources in if you would like. I know some people hate Zillow, that's great, but they do have good leads because it's just the way that it works, right? Um, you can get your realtor.com. I don't find them as quite a good leads, but depending on the area that you're in, the state that you're in the area, they might have great leads. You just never know unless you try something sometimes. Um, this is like the talking or I would say associations. So I don't call it your sphere because that's limiting. A sphere is limiting. That means that you are at capacity or it's only as many people as you know right now. And so some people will say, I don't have a sphere. I'm like, great, but you have associations and you can create more associations. That's something you have control over, right? So we do our association. So all these combined, like something shakes out. Oh, you got your open houses, right? You got your YouTube, if you want to put in YouTube. Social media statistically, which may also, I haven't looked at YouTube stats, but social media stats, so I'm not sure if they like bundled those in together, but the stats that just came out was it's only 10%. Be sure. Oh, somebody unmuted. 10% um, of a an agent's business last year came from social media. It was only 10%. So that's why we don't put all the eggs in that basket because you're only getting 10% from that, right? Anyway, so all those things, and then you're going to get the stuff that's going to drop out and, and be, be worth it, right? And it's going to get you the money. So that probably just made Sharice go like, well, great, now you just told me to pick one thing and now you just tell me all the things, right? Well, a lot of these things, like all the free lead sources, that's something that you sign up for once and you don't have to do it again so it runs in the background. If you do any paid lead sources, those you sign up for pay for once or monthly, but then it runs in the background. It's not something that you're actively doing every single day that's taking your time. YouTube, get yourself on a schedule. If you want to do YouTube, just make sure you're providing valuable content and information. It's not just a fun show to watch. We have lots of fun shows we can already watch, right? Um, you know, your expired for sale by owners. If you want to contact those, come up with a plan, but then execute on that plan and spend so much time per week doing that. You're going to have to schedule yourself out. And yeah, if you do like your first time home buyers, whatever that plan is. Anyway, there's certain things that can run in the background, and then there's certain things that you're going to have to schedule time during the week to be able to set aside and, and do that. So, Sharice, as you start on one, start to tackle that one, get the plan, and, and what that's going to look like and how you're going to schedule out your time, and then you add another thing in that you're starting to work on as well. Yeah, and that's how we start. And then to your point, Michael... When we talk about our past clientele, the reason why I'm always like, if you are going to pay me for anything, you buy the follow-up playbook for $39 because I'm telling everybody right now, if you don't stay in touch with your past clients with value, value and personal touch, this is not paying some company to send them something that opens their mail, right? Like the junk that we receive. I'm talking about with value, 
you build a business. So all this stuff right here, I don't do this anymore. None of it. Because people just call me. They won't quit calling me. They haven't quit calling me for five years. And they just call and they send their friends and their friends call me. So I don't have to do all these things because what ends up happening is you build that client base and they continue to refer out and they continue to come back. And then eventually you don't have to do this. This is, this is just the beginning of the game. The end game is that you have a revolving door of, of clients that can continue to come to you and send people to you. So then you're more like a real business, not someone always looking for leads, right? We're like a dentist and you don't get a new dentist every six months. So if you treat your clients right and you follow up well, they come back to you every time they need to sell or buy or when their kids need to sell or buy or when their parents die or when their friend moves, right? That's how you start to compound your business. Thank you. And that's what, that's what my, uh, I'll say goal. That's what my goal is, is to have it to where once I build that clientele is the referrals, the, and, and it, it, I, it, it's, I play, I'm a very creative person. I think outside the box. So it's, it's like, my name is Michael Rosenbaum. So it's MR is my initials. Well, I play on Mr. Real Estate. Oh, nice. So, I, like so it. I play on, I play on that. So it's one of those things to where if you just meet one person one time, you and that's you just have a first impression. You have to make you have to be memorable. Yeah, so sure. I'm I'm trying to make sure that I know the market. I, my knowledge is there for the market. My I live in Tennessee, Northeast Tennessee. So our beautiful views. Uh, it, we have a lot of w transplants, <laughs> but yeah. we have a lot of people coming into our area for the views for our area. So it it it's one of those things where I have also realized that. When with real estate, especially for out of state buyers, mm -hmm. that's a big part of your job is to sell your area, not just the house. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The more the more information you can provide, which is great. If you have a lot of people coming from out of state, Michael, then YouTube that may be a really great thing to capitalize on, so that you can get some of that SEO. When people, I would also, if you're gonna if you're gonna put forth the effort to do YouTube, I would make sure that if you have your own website, that you're embedding that in your blog on your website. Yes. Okay. Yes. And putting some information on there so that you can and kind of writing a blog post from what you've taught, right? And you can AI summary that real easy when you yeah. create your videos. Yeah. So I would do that. So then when somebody goes to search, like, you know, what you know, gonna buy a house in Tennessee, like you're gonna start to pop up, not just because you're a realtor, but because you're providing great information for them. And that right there helps with conversion. Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Very good, great ideas. And Michael's a really great example, everybody, just for just getting out and taking action, right? Most of this job is literally just that. It's not about how smart we are all the time. It's not about how fancy we are. It's not about the car we drive. It's not about, you know, the tools that we have. Nobody gives a rip. Honestly, the clients don't care. They care that you get out. You're an expert in what you're telling them, right? The information about the market. You're an expert at that. You can communicate it really well. And you're willing to get out and have the conversation. Like that would be like number one tip for the day. So, and I, I mean, I, I think what branded me is my coach that I went through the first three or four months in, into my agency. I love my agency, Greater Impact Realty. But we, um, my coach used a word one time, and it, it kind of it shocked me. And I still use it today. He asked me, he said, "How was your week?" I said, "It's busy." He said, "No, no, no, no." He said, "Were you doing work?" for your job i said yeah he said well then you were productive not busy yes so i used so now i always use the word productive not busy and then he explained you know you got to work in your business but you also have to work on your business and you have to balance the both so yep. that was that was learning that from the beginning was uh was great awesome that's good sounds like you had a good coach all right guys what else you got anybody else have a, a question for coach today Tell me a little bit more about your playbook that you have and how we would access that. What's the benefit of it? I know you've shared a little bit. It's on the follow-up, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So this is follow-up. So this is everything post-sale. So this is my, my system that I use post-sale, my system, my whole process. I give you everything. I give you examples of what I do. It's literally like step-by-step, -step. <clears throat> super easy. It's like an hour. I think the class is an hour long. You get the recording, you get the class. And then you get all the documents and information and the step-by-step -step of how to do it. It's 39 bucks. You can get it agentleader.com. If you go up to the top underneath coaching, you will find marketing playbooks. 
and it's inside one of my marketing playbooks. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, Linda has a question. Linda, can you camera on so I can talk back to you? Somebody said they didn't have access to that today. Um, how do I train new agents coming into my brokerage or my team? So um, in our brokerage, the number one thing or only thing that we do when they come into our brokerage is we hook them up with my Kickstart program. So the reason why, I don't think I have it sitting here. Well, I kind of do. Anyway, it's my Kickstart business growth, which is getting a little bit of a revamp this year. Um, but the reason why I actually created the kickstart program was because as we kept having new agents come into our brokerage, I would be repeating myself over and over and over and over again. And finally I was like, oh my gosh, I'm saying the same thing over because to the point where I'd be like, did I tell you that? Or did I tell somebody else that? Now I don't know who I told what, right? And so I created the kickstart business growth, which is the perfect for new agents or anybody who's not selling, or even if you've been in the business a long time, it doesn't have to do with how long you've been in business. It has to do with what your volume is. Um, anyway, anybody that's struggling, that literally is my entire process from beginning to end for selling. So I, and I teach a little bit of investment in there as well. So that's how I train agents that come into my brokerage. And then that's available for other brokerages. You're welcome, Linda. Um, Linda, if you go to agentleader.com, scroll down, you will see a button you can click if you are a broker owner and you would like to talk about that and see what maybe could be helpful for you in your brokerage. And if that training program would work, I actually have licensed that to brokerages now. So now you can have your own branded co um, coaching program for your office. And then when you recruit people in, then you just hook them up on the system. And they get into coaching and then they have the whole program and it's like the most wonderful thing ever. So um, that takes that all off your plate. And it also helps your people be more productive and they get going faster. You start to sell faster. So you're welcome. All right. What else we got? Okay. I have one other question. Sure. And I, I know you, I, I love the way that you do, you, you take this aspect is yes, you're a coach and you're a teacher. Uh -huh. But you're also, you're letting us ask the questions so that you're teaching us what we need to know. Yes. Um, but I've got a question. Sure. Um, as a real estate agent, we drive quite a bit. So yeah. we're in the car a lot. So mm -hmm. I have been listening to podcasts while I'm in the car. Mm -hmm. Can you have, do you have any suggestions of a, of specific podcasts that, that are good to listen to? Um, I, so what I tend to listen to um, is personal growth podcasts. So I'm all about personal development. And so if I were you, I would hit Brendan Burchard. He has a great um, marketing and growth, personal growth podcast. He has two different ones. He has one for marketing, one for personal growth. Always. Um, he's awesome. Ed Milet is also amazing. They're actually, Brendan Burchard is actually my coach and just, Top notch. These number two in the world. Ed Milet's number one in the world as coaches. So a lot of what they teach and train on is fact based. It's evidence based. So it's not okay. just it's not just opinion. So I don't like to listen to things that are just opinion because it's just someone's opinion, right? Gotcha. I like I like to learn. So that would be me. If you are in the realm of struggling with um, like relationships or children or anything like that, um, I love Jody Moore Better Than Happy podcast. That's an awesome one that helped me get through having a teenager. Um, that was a really good with mindset. She's also a, a life coach and uses a thought model, which I do as well. So, and then you can listen to my podcast if you want to, but those are the growth podcasts I listen to. I don't listen to mainstream everybody's opinion about real estate. It's an okay. opinion. So gotcha. I just, yeah. I have a six-year-old little boy and an eight-year-old little girl. So trust me, I could use the last one you spoke on. Yeah. Head, head to do any more is better than happy podcast. Um, the other person that's really great for mindset is um, Brooke Castillo. So she's actually my coach as well. And she created the thought model. That's, that's her method and her coaching. Okay. But she, is this going to, is this going to be recorded to where we can go back and watch it? So every session here, and you can listen to past sessions on my podcast. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. Business, business, the real estate business growth and mindset. I see someone asked about CRMs. I'd love to get some feedback on that too. How do you use your CRM and what's, what's your feedback on that? All right. We're going to have to draw a picture for this one. Just a second. Okay. Somebody's going to get mad at me here and I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> okay. Here's my buckets. They are square buckets, rectangles, whatever. These are my buckets. Okay. Here's how I work my business. This is the magic sauce. Okay. Okay. So there's only three buckets that I put my clients in. That's it. So three places they can go. They can go nowhere else. Okay. And they all don't need to go in the same spot. Because I have a I have a flow chart of what happens when you meet a client and what type of client they are, what their status is, and then how you're gonna nurture them. So inside my academy, that's something I teach is what that flow should look like to be the most productive. Because what I've seen from agents is we may get some contacts and then we try to beat those contacts to death until they buy something from you. And that's not how I ran my business. My business was how many people can I meet? How many names, phone numbers, emails can I get, but with purpose? Okay, so when when someone comes into my world, if they're a buyer, they go into my buyer bucket, which is a search. Okay, this is my buyer bucket is they get put on a search. It is free. You don't have to pay for a separate CRM. Literally inside your MLS, you can put your client on a search for property. Okay, that's what I mean by search. So this is just a property search. That's my number one goal. Always my number one goal is to put them on a search. If they're a year out from buying, that's okay. I still want to put them on a search now so they can watch the market and they can, even if they get, you know, you can set the delivery options. So if they're going to get put on a search, maybe they only want to be notified once a week. Maybe they want to be notified once a day. Maybe they want to be notified immediately. You know, they're shopping Zillow. So they need to shop from you instead of from Zillow. Okay. So every buyer goes on a search. Okay. The next bucket is my seller's. So if they're not ready, sorry, I can't write today. If they're not ready to buy yet, then they go on HomeBot. That's a CRM as well. It's just a separate company, 25 bucks a month for up to a thousand people, super affordable for everyone. Um, that's where my sellers go because that keeps me dripping them every single month, their value. It helps me stay in front of them. And then again, you have to also decide What's their time frame and how often do you need to keep in touch with them via phone call? But I never, ever, for these two people, I don't put them on a meaningless drip. So that's totally against mainstream. Everybody else is like, yep, hook them up on your seller email sequence, blah, 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 right? I don't want the emails. I don't want them. I don't know why they would want them. They're usually kind of junk, right? Junk email, and it's not personalized. So this is giving them value. This is giving them value. This is all I've ever done. This is how I built my business. Right now, currently, I have about 79 people on a search. This is how I build my business. They may not be ready to buy now, but when they're ready, they're getting emails from me all the time and they call me back. And there's some other parts to that for follow-up and how we differentiate, like how we follow up with these people. If you want to know that, throw it in the chat and I'll teach you that here too. So I call all your cold traffic, that would be a CRM. So if you're running Facebook ads, if you are paying for leads that are like junk leads, like, okay, they're maybe not all junk leads, but ones you have to sift through and put a lot of time in to try to find the one that wants to do something, that's where a CRM is going to come into play. I know my sister likes Lion Desk. She says it's easy. I think whatever's available to you or what, what works for your brain, every CRM works so differently and our brains work so different that some of them make zero sense to me. And, I, and it's more work for me than it is to just call people. But that's where I would filter your CRM. This is going to be your drip. And I would just look at what the drip is that you're sending them. What's happening is you're trying to get them to respond to you. Let me move that out of the way. You're trying to get them to respond, right? The second you get a response, you are going to take them out of here and you're going to put them in one of these buckets and that you're going to shut this off for them. We don't want to keep them in there. That's not the goal. So this is just to get people to raise their hand and say, yes, I want some help. And it's for the people that have never, that you've never talked to before. Okay. But your goal, if you've talked to them is to go in one of these two buckets. Does that help? 
Okay. Um, follow up for buckets, please. Also do how many days a week do you send your buyers properties? Do you automatically convert them over to HomeBot when you close? Good question, Jessica. Yes, they all go on HomeBot. Every, every person I've ever sold a house to goes on HomeBot. And there's in my follow-up playbook, I give you an email template for that. And I also give you an email template. Like if you've got past clients and you've never put them on it before, you don't just randomly sign them up for it. They're going to think it's junk mail, right? So you have to preface it. You have to get your positioning on it before you just put them on there. Um, and I give you a way to do that that keeps you as the person with all the information, you hold all the cards. Um, how many days a week do I send my buyer's properties? I ask my buyer, how often do you want properties? And if they're like, I don't know. I'm like, how often are you looking at Zillow? How often are you searching the internet for properties? Most of my clients, they're on immediate because that's what they're doing is they're going to get a notification from like Zillow. I got to be the fastest, right? So my pitch that I always give someone is that, getting notifications from me is faster than Zillow. So they're going to get notified immediately when something hits the market, whereas it may take some time to load up to Zillow and sync before they would get notified. So we're faster. Okay. Literally, are we like one minute faster? Probably one minute, right? Maybe 10. I don't know, but it's still faster. And people are like, oh yeah, really? Okay. Like they're all over it. That's a really good sales pitch, but it's truth. It is true that we are faster. Um, okay. So then you want to know what how I follow up from here. Like my thing is like tipping over sideways today. Um, okay, so the way that I follow up from here, so this is like my my plan for how I deal with people, right? When I meet them and where I put them in the buckets. Then on Monday morning, when you're like, what am I gonna do with my life today? I have nothing to do. You go look at your percentage rate of like your, not your percentage, but your open rate. You're going to look at who's opening their emails because on both of these, you can see who's opened the emails and how many times they've opened it and who's been most recent. Okay. So when you look at that, then you're going to take the top people. You're going to start from the top down. That's who you touch base with. Now you have a method, right? So that would look like, I'm going to look at my buyers and I'm going to see, okay, who's opening their emails and clicking so many times and looking and favoriting things and all that, right? Then I'm going to do my follow-up with them. Now that can be phone call. That could be email if you wanted. Text message and phone call are the most effective. And most of the time what I do is just shoot them a text. And there's another layer to this. But most of the time I just shoot them a text and just be like, hey, did you see this property that I sent you? What did you think about it? Or I saw that you like this one. Do you want to go see it? Like you're just trying to instigate some sort of action. And also you're, communi like you're continuing to communicate with them and you're staying on top of it, right? So that's, there's another layer deep, but we're getting deep. But that's, this is pretty much, yeah, gives you some guidance. Um, question from, good question too, by the way. Sharice, you're all over it today. Woo, Sharice and Michael, all over it. Um, Steven said, can you speak to websites? What is the best type for us a for us as new agents? I would have an IDX feed in my website. So I will tell you, um, I didn't have an IDX feed for a long time. Um, I still made a million dollars a year not having a, a website with IDX. Okay. So is it helpful? Sure. It is. But is it necessary? Nothing's ever necessary if you hustle enough. Um, websites, you need to have something, and this is what I will say all day long, you need to have a website that's branded to you that is separate from your broker. So it is a good value for you to do that. I did do that back in the day. And then people can find you. You can work on your SEO, which Matt McGee, thumbs up, he's the best for SEO. Um, you can start to, to brand yourself. And then if you ever change brokerages or your brokerage shuts down or something happens, you didn't just lose yourself, right? The other thing is if you only have status inside your broker's website and there's a random person that clicks on the website and they're trying to find an agent or they're trying to find you and they kind of can't remember your name, then they might click on somebody else and you've lost a lead. So it's just great to have your own website that you can put your own reviews on and all that good stuff um, as well. IDX feed, yes. Mine is hosted on Easy Agent Pro. 
And I can give you a code to get a deal on that if you want to email me. Um, it works great. It looks beautiful. You can do landing pages, which is very important. You can gather their contact information. And I get leads off of my website all the time. And it's just up there. And I'm not even a professional at SEO. I can totally up my level on that too. So that would be my opinion about that. Um, I know that if you do like a WordPress site or something, you can pay separately to have the IDX feed put in there. I want to say, don't quote me, it was like 30 something bucks a month or it wasn't a lot. So if you want to do it that way, you can. Um, I think I pay like 139 a month for my website, something in that realm to have Easy Agent Pro. But you also want to have the, all the additional like landing squeeze, page, squeeze pages as well so that you can offer something, create new, that's kind of your funnels. If you're going to do a funnel, um, that's going to be how you're going to create funnels to get people to, so like first time home buyers, right? You're going to create a first time home buyer funnel. You'll have a page for that. You're going to offer something. They'll have to put in their contact information. You now gathered their information. It's the same thing that all these companies that keep calling you and saying, we can get you X amount of leads per month. They're running ads on Facebook or they're doing SEO and, and they've got websites. And all they're doing is gathering that information and then selling it to you. Quit paying people, just do it yourself. Um, you can pay Easy Agent Pro to set up your website. I paid my mother. So <laughs> whatever you want to do. I am not great with technology. And I tried it myself and I was like, screw that. I can make more money selling houses. And I paid my mom a thousand dollars and she built my website. She is for hire. So you, you can, she's phenomenal at it. She's done everybody in our brokerage because we all use Easy Agent Pro. So if you email me, support at agentleader.com, I can get you her contact information. She's the best. And she's my mom. All right. What else we got? Good questions. We're covering like a lot of great topics today. Good stuff. I'd love to hear your thoughts on your squeeze and landing pages. I don't know if we still have enough time for that. Sure. What um, What specifically about those? Just... Um, in, as part of some of your training, I know there's lots of different options out there that you can pay for that people can design different um, templates and things to that kind of get people to click and provide their information. What do you use to help people click? What type of information, I guess, do you provide that has been the most effective for those squeeze pages? So it's going to depend on your area a little bit. So like if I were Michael, I would do a squeeze page for people moving to Tennessee, buying, you know, great deals in Tennessee or deals with views or whatever it might be, right? It depends on what you're looking to, to gather or like who you're trying to attract. Um, there's a whole, gosh, that's a whole like can of worms. And I would say we had an entire training on that at conference last year. And I literally brought my Facebook person in who is a complete pro at that, who's helped me do it for the last four years. And she taught for two and a half hours. And we actually gave out all the templates and everything to be able to do at least three different types of landing pages. Um, here's what I would say. If you are, if you guys are, if you're interested in coming to conference, so I, I hold a conference. It's unlike any other real estate conference out there because we are meshing personal growth with real estate growth and actionable things that you can be able to learn. Um, I will give you all the recordings from last year's conference and you will have all that information. So I recorded um, professionally, we had done um, every single, so SEO with Matt, uh, we had Patty Sampson on there and she taught us about um, your CRMs, everything about the CRMs. And then I had my Facebook ads person there and she taught us for two and a half hours and we gave out an entire three sets of all the email sequence follow-up, the landing page, what your ad would look like if you were going to run Facebook ads. But that would at least give you a landing page. It, there's a lot of parts to a funnel. So it's not a quick answer, I guess, is why I'm saying that. Um, but conference, man, this year I've got a guy who used to work for Google and he's teaching us Google ads. And he is creating an entire package for us for you to take home with what your settings should look like, how you're going to run your own Google ads. Um, specifically for real estate agents. So he's going to come teach for about two and a half hours and do some Q&A as well at conference. So that conference is, so it's called Equip, Prepare for Purpose. It is in Boise, Idaho. It is April 15th and 16th. We have a bonus day for our VIPs on the 17th. That's going to be with myself. It's going to be a small group of 50 and we're doing a deep dive 
That's going to be with myself and with Grant Muller. If you've ever heard of Grant Muller, he's also does a million dollar GCI uh, author, amazing speaker, but so super freaking smart um, and also a high performance coach. So that's going to be our VIPs get a third day with just the two of us um, where we're going to be diving more into your business, a little bit of networking. Um, is is that going to only be live or would could we get a virtual of that? So I, I'm not going to be streaming it. I'm okay. not, I'm not that technical yet. <laughs> My coach says go about four years before you decide to start streaming. Cause it's very complicated. Um, it will be recorded. So if you can't be here in person, which being here in person is going to be the greatest thing, but if you can't be here in person, you will get the recording. Okay. And the only reason I ask, my little girl, she's in competition cheer and she travels, oh, yeah. we travel to the world championship in Florida that way. The oh end, yeah. So. No. so you will be getting, <laughs> you will be getting, that's probably, that's a pretty good excuse. Um, you'll be getting a replay tickets right now or early bird pricing. It's only $149. Okay. We've got two full days and and I'm telling you this conference, you're not going to be like, rah, rah, rah. Let's talk about everybody's opinion about the market. I don't care about everybody's opinion. I literally am bringing in someone to teach you how to do objection handling, um, how to deal with um, that conversation, the conversion. She's a sales coach for corporate. Okay. So she's yeah. going to come in and teach. I mean, we've got some just top-notch, amazing people coming to to teach us. It's more teaching than it is speaking, is what I call it. And I have also found out that whether you're new to the game or you've been in it for 50 years, so I'm going to make a suggestion. Sure. For the heart. She was talking about the squeeze play. One yeah. thing that I did, being in Tennessee, and I have been reaching out to other areas, is I was I would make a squeeze play a squeeze page be to <clears throat> one of our um, restaurants that you go in, sit down, and you can watch the, the football games while you're there because it's football time. That's oh. that's a great thing to do right now. So they don't know the area, so give them give them something that would, like I said, I I, I yeah, sold I my area in that way. So a squeeze page was restaurants to eat that and to be able to watch the game or yeah. different things like that. Activities to do while you're visiting the area to see if it matches you. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Good, good comments. I love that. Um, somebody just asked what value should I be getting from joining a team that takes 50% of each sale? None, <laughs> none go out on your own and hire a coach. You'll make way more money. Amber. That's my opinion. I, I do not love the people that win in a team is the team leader. So if you're a team leader and you're making all the money, that's good for you. I personally, as we hired people in our brokerage, I did not go the team route. Um, I I go the referral route where I will I will send extra business or if I have leads that I don't that I don't want or need or whatever, if I generate more than everybody else, I will pass those off to people in my brokerage. I'll charge them 25%. So I'm still making, I think one of the months I'd made like 15 grand and I didn't do anything. I mean, I 15 grand from referrals, right? Um, so that's... That's what I would, people that take money from you, uh, that's tough. Then you have to work twice as hard to make just as much money. So not my favorite. And um, that's what I started in when I told you I was on an internal team. That's what they did was take, yeah. or that's what they do and did was take the 50%. But it actually, me being new then, not now, because I'm experienced, <laughs> like you said, but yeah. I, that was giving me the experience. And then I also said, would had the mindset that, you know, 50% of something is a whole lot better than hundred percent of nothing. Yeah, no. And then that's, and that's, and for some people working for a builder, being on a team, like if you're in that position and that's a good thing for you at that point, that's great. But I do, the comments I've had from people is if they're on a team for a long time, like two, three, four years, everything's been branded underneath the team lead. And so you don't get all your sales. You don't get all the money. You don't get all of that. Um, so then when they're, going out on their own, they feel like they're starting over, right? Because they have to rebuild themselves in their database. I'm not game for that. I just rather do it from the get-go. It's my- From the get-go, yes. Yeah. And like I said, that's about. one reason, that's one reason why that I'm, I'm, I'm researching and watching to see what the lead gen is. Yeah. I mean, the team I'm on, if I brought in the lead, it's all mine. It's, it's, but if it's a, a Zillow lead or something produced by them, it was theirs. Uh, which makes sense. So that's, that's makes sense because they're paying for it. Yeah. Okay, um, we had somebody ask a couple questions in the chat here. Um, 
When joining a team in our office, one of the teams, they pay for the marketing materials. They give you a credit for the sales and you are listed as a first agent and it reduces the cap from 18 to nine. Yeah, if it's a benefit to you, just make sure it's a benefit. But if they're just taking like a lot, just look, weigh the benefits. That's all I'm saying. Weigh the benefits. Some teams are set up and they're more kind. Some teams just take a lot of your money and it makes you struggle. So just weigh the benefits. Um, can I clarify what time the last VIP day ends? It will end at two o'clock. The VIP day for conference will end. It's going to be nine to two on the third day um, with, with lunch provided. Um, let's see. And VIP day will not be recorded. Um, what else? Somebody is doing a, you're posting a reel on your Facebook and you don't want the caption to sound too cocky. So it's a reel that has all your qualifications as to why someone should send me as their agent. Okay, I'm gonna flip you for just a second. So your qualifications, people are gonna care how you make them feel, but they're gonna care a whole lot less about your qualifications, right? Like who really cares how many houses I've sold? I mean, you may, maybe not, or what qualifications I have as a coach, but if I can give you the information and help you, that's the thing that matters the most, right? So just make sure whatever type of advertising you're doing there, that it's what can you do for them? What are they going to end up feeling or doing different because they're hiring you? That's what you want to market with. So it's a whole lot less. The way that we like to explain it in marketing land is it's like the trip to Hawaii, okay? And Alex Ramosi, who's like, right now, one of the best marketers um, explains it this way. It's a lot less about the plane ride to Hawaii. And it's a lot more about the destination of how you're going to feel when you're in Hawaii. And when we try to market ourselves, we have a really great tendency to tell them all about our qualifications and about the process and about what it's going to look like when they work with you. And they really don't care. They want to know when I'm in Hawaii, how am I going to feel? So how are you differentiating yourself from every other agent that's out there? Why are you different? What makes you different? That's what you want to focus on. Because when people want to hire me, right, they're going to hire me because the communication is going to be so amazing that they're going to enjoy the process. So many people hate agents because the process has been terrible. It's not been fun. When they come to me, I'm like, we're going to have fun. This isn't supposed to be stressful. This is supposed to be a good experience, right? And I'm going to make sure that this is a good experience for you through the communication, through the all the contracts, through the inspections, through all the things. It's going to be a fun experience through the lending. It's going to be a fun experience. It's going to be great. We're going to reduce the amount of stress that you're having. If I'm sitting on the beach in Hawaii, my stress is going to be reduced, right? That's the thing that we want to explore with them and pitch to them. So revamp it. Um, yes, Amber. So Amber said, can you hire me as a coach? So yes. So you can hire me as a coach. Um, you have two different options. Sometimes I take one-on-one -on -one clients. So you'd have to email me and ask me that if I'm taking any new one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, but then the most affordable way that you can be able to hire me is if you would like to join my academy. So I keep my academy affordable for a reason. It is $279 a month and you can come in. And I honestly, I didn't change the settings in my system yet. So for right now, it's still lifetime access. So once you've paid 12 months, you get lifetime coaching. That's what my, my, my coaching program is. We coach every single week. Every Wednesday, we have coaching session. You have access to all the replays. Right now, we are working on some, what I'm going to call groundbreaking high dollar listing marketing program that we are all working on together. So if you get in now, you'll still have time to do that with us. Um, it's going to be freaking amazing. And we are literally going after the million dollar listings. Yeah, right, Natasha? And we are gonna kill it with this new marketing method. So it's not something that's out there. It is literally something I made up that is freaking awesome. And we are workshopping this together and launching it by the beginning of February. So 279 bucks a month, it gets you all of my kickstart training, my supercharged training, but then you also get me live every week. So everything that you need, it's a customized program. So once you get in with me, 
I actually do a one-on-one -on -one session with you so I can understand your business, where you're at, where you've been. We can get you some faster wins and maybe make some tweaks if we need to. And then I'm going to give you a roadmap to any of the recorded training that's going to be helpful for you. And then we're, we'll jump you into the live training. So it, there's a, I have 300 classes. No one's going to watch my 300 classes and you don't need to. You're going to need what you need. So, and thanks, Angie. She says, woohoo, let's go. Definitely join. And it's totally worth it. And I, indiv I individualized her plan for her. Yeah. And your skill set. Because we're not all the same, guys. Like there's not one way to do this because you're not all one type of person. So we all like to sell in different ways. So awesome. Okay. And with that, you can find all of that on agentleader.com. If you have questions, you can be able to email me support at agentleader.com and I will answer the email directly myself. And um, good session today, guys. Lots of great questions. I appreciate you being here and I will see you again or hopefully see you inside the Academy or a conference live because it's going to be freaking amazing. So thank, all right, guys. thank you so much. Thank you guys. Have a good rest of your week. Where are you at in your real estate business, people? What's going on for you? Are you having some struggles finding consistency in the crazy market that we're having right now? Are you maybe wondering what's the next best thing for you to be able to do? Well, I have a solution for you. You can actually come to ask a coach and ask those questions to find out what your next best step is. Because the thing is, your next best step is not the same best step for the other person, right? The other person in your office. What we need to do is dive in to discover what you love, what what your skills are, what your market around you is like, and how you can be able to capitalize on that so that you can be able to make more sales because that's the goal, right? So come to Ask a Coach, click the link below, and I will see you with your questions at Ask a Coach and come get coached for free.